How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. And today we're just going to be talking about IP Vanish and NordVPN and which one of these VPNs could be the best choice for you. So before we begin, if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, be it IP Vanish or NordVPN, you'll find links to special deals and discounts in the description down below. In this video, we're going to be talking about the privacy policy, speed streaming and torrenting capabilities and security and features of each one of these VPNs. So starting with the privacy policy of IP Vanish, which is arguably the most important aspect of what a VPN can offer. Uh, this is usually what decides whether a user will trust a VPN provider or not. Almost every VPN claims to follow a strict no logs policy, but unfortunately this is just a common marketing tactic used by companies to acquire casual users trust, uh, and most of the time it's a false claim. Now, in IP Vanish's case, it's a little bit of both. Like all providers, IP Vanish claims a strict no log policy, as it states in their privacy policy page. IP Vanish does not collect, monitor, or log any traffic or use of its virtual private network service on any platform. Uh, now, nothing in their privacy policy looks off, and there's no history of any data breaches. And since there are no independent audit reports that are available to the public, all we can do is take their word for it and hope that they deliver on the no log policy claim. Though if IP Vanish wants to keep up with VPN giants like Express, Nord, and Surfshark, they will need to start allowing for independent audits to take place. Now, with regards to the privacy policy of NordVPN, Nord is very transparent about their data collection. They never track the IP addresses that you use, the websites you visit, and files you download, or the time and duration of your online sessions. They have a strict no logs policy, and there's really no evidence to suggest otherwise. Nord also had its no logs privacy policy audited by a third party company called PricewaterhouseCoopers. Once in 2018 and another time in 2020, both audits successfully verified Nord's no log policy and confirmed their privacy claim. Names. And this is what I usually like to see from VPNs, kind of providing evidence that they do uphold the integrity of their no logs policy. Now, with regards to speed, both of these VPNs are rather quick thanks to the protocols, the uh, WireGuard protocols right here. So if I go to settings, you'll notice that we have a handful of protocols, which is really cool to have. Uh, but honestly, with IP Vanish, if you're going to use the VPN to its, let's say, maximum potential, you want to stick to the WireGuard guard protocol and it's the same with nordvpn uh, though i've noticed that nordvpn is about 10 percent faster but overall honestly both vpns are very quick even if nordvpn is about 5 to 10 or sometimes 15 percent faster uh, ip vanish is still very quick thanks to its wireguard protocol with regards to streaming and torrenting, both VPNs work perfectly fine with uh, torrenting and peer-to-peer -peer activities. You even have special peer-to-peer -peer servers here in NordVPN, but I didn't notice any particular advantages to using the peer-to-peer -peer servers for torrenting over any other regular server. Uh, so yeah, overall, both VPNs work great for torrenting. And with regards to streaming, I was able to unblock uh, HBO Max, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, Netflix UK, as well as BBC iPlayer, which is also available in the UK. Now, unfortunately, thanks to the latest crackdown by Netflix on VPN traffic, uh, while in the past, IP Vanish and NordVPN had no problem unblocking US Netflix specifically, unfortunately, now they are having quite a bit of trouble with unblocking US Netflix. I was not able to unblock US Netflix. So uh, yeah, even here, when I'm connected to a US server with NordVPN, if I go ahead and try to look up Get On Up, which is a movie that's only available in the States, you'll notice that I just can't find it. Uh, so if that's something you're specifically looking for, I would recommend that you go to ExpressVPN and Surfshark, which work just fine when it comes to Netflix and streaming services in general. They're the better choice overall when it comes to unblocking streaming services. So you'll find links to both ExpressVPN and Surfshark in the description as well if you're interested. Uh, but when it comes to, let's say, BBC iPlayer and American uh, streaming services like HBO Max, Disney, Amazon Prime Video, you are still able to unblock them using IP Vanish and NordVPN. Now, in terms of 
security and features, IPVanish boasts the standard 256-bit encryption with a 2048-bit key. Uh, you've got five protocol choices, as you can tell. A kill switch is also available right here, as well as DNS leak protection and IPv6 traffic leak protection. Though the kill switch is not available on iOS, so keep that in mind. And besides the handful of protocols here, as well as kill switch and the DNS leak blocks, which are pretty solid, unfortunately, you won't be getting any uh, split tunneling or any specialty features for that matter. And if you're looking to get IPVanish to work in China, unfortunately, it won't really work to get around the Great Firewall of China or any other censorship heavy countries for that matter. If you're looking for a VPN that works in restrictive countries, you're going to have to go with NordVPN, which works quite well in censorship heavy countries. Of course, IPVanish has over 1400 servers spread across a diverse 57 countries, all of which are apparently owned and over 40,000 IP addresses. Uh, but unfortunately, they do not run their servers on RAM disk mode, which means user data could potentially be acquired from the servers by third parties. This is considered a, a little bit of a drawback and it takes away from the validity of their no logs policy claim. RAM disks are being adopted by most quality VPNs. Uh, these servers will mean that data is erased with every machine reboot, leaving no information behind since there's no physical hard drive to store data on. Uh, and of course, with uh, NordVPN here, most of these servers, not all of them, but most of the servers do run on RAM disk drives. You've got over 5,100 servers in 60 countries. So that's three more countries, uh, but about four, uh, but yeah, about 3,500 more servers, which is a huge number really. And you have access to all the servers right here. Uh, similar to IPVanish actually, um, the, uh, I mean, the user interface, I wouldn't say it's the easiest to use. It's not exactly the most intuitive. Uh, if you go to, let's say, Quick Connect right here, you select United States, for example, and I don't know, Dallas, you'll actually have access to all the servers, uh, which is really cool. So yeah, you can pick any of the uh, IP addresses right here. And it's the same with NordVPN, which is one thing they have in common. So let's say you pick Atlanta, you're actually going to have access to all the servers. You can just, uh, yeah, pick through them. And uh, yeah, not a lot of VPNs uh, really provide that kind of uh, freedom uh, of selection between the servers. Besides that, NordVPN has plenty of features, honestly, besides, of course, the kill switch. Uh, you have specialty servers, including Onion VPN and peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. And if you switch to Open VPN, you will notice, so change and reconnect, uh, you will notice that uh, you have access to two more uh, specialty servers, such as dedicated IP and double VPN, which is pretty cool. It can be pretty handy if you're uh, interested in uh, such specialty servers. And then you've got uh, an ad blocker, not only a conventional kill switch, but also an app kill switch, which will close selected apps when you disconnect from the VPN or the connection drops unexpectedly, unlike the conventional internet kill switch, which will disconnect your entire connection when the VPN disconnects unexpectedly. Uh, you've got split tunneling, of course, if you didn't know what that is, you get to choose which applications uh, are tunneled through the VPN and which are not. So for example, you can have only Netflix or only your browser or only your torrenting client uh, use the VPN while the rest of your connection is left untouched by the VPN tunnel. So this can be useful or, or vice versa, by the way. Uh, and in advance, you have an easy way to change your DNS with custom DNS and obfuscated servers. If you're in a censorship heavy country, as I mentioned earlier, uh, NordVPN does work in uh, China. So yeah, or any other censorship heavy country for that matter. Overall, when you put all these features together and then you take a look at the pricing, it starts to make more sense as to which VPN you're going to want to go for. So if we take a look at the pricing here, where is it? Actually, right here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so look at this. Now, the first year is definitely uh, cheaper than, than NordVPN. So we've got four dollars a month whereas for the yearly plan in nordvpn you're going to pay 59 dollars uh, for one year here you're going to be paying 48 dollars um not not the biggest difference but if you notice here it's only for the first year you're going to be paying 48 dollars and then the year after you'll be paying 90 dollars 
which is just, it's, it's an absurd amount for the, well, the service you're getting. Sure, they're both great VPNs. They work just fine. They're pretty secure. Well, on paper, not as secure as Nord, actually. Nord works better with streaming services. They both have live chat support for sure. Uh, but when it comes to just locations and features, Nord really wins here and speed, by the way, and performance. Uh, so yeah, the pricing here, I don't think it's very justified. So, if you're going to count two years, this is 90 plus 48, which is roughly $140, something like that. Whereas with NordVPN, you can get two years, okay? And if you click the link in the description, usually you will get three months for free. But with the, with the link in the description, you'll get four months for free. You'll be able to get yourself 28 months with $89 dollars rather than uh, IP Vanish's plan here, which is of course $89.99 for the year after. It's just a single year. So yeah, mm, IP Vanish is just much more expensive for a service that uh, I don't think really deserves such pricing. If it were a little bit cheaper than that, I would, yeah, I could probably recommend it. But yeah, NordVPN is definitely gonna be the winner here. Uh, it's even, even if you just wanna go for the one year plan, it's worth getting NordVPN over IP Vanish. It's, I mean, the price difference is really not that big here. So yeah, 59 versus uh, IP Vanish is 48. Yeah, uh, and if you're gonna go for the long-term plan, uh, just getting charged for the second year about double, they're charging you about double the first year. That's a little bit weird, kind of a, yeah, I, I don't I don't really like that. So yeah, I would just go with NordVPN if I were you, but it's up to you at the end of the day. Again, if you guys are interested in any of these VPNs, you'll find links to special deals and discounts in the description down below, especially if you wanna get NordVPN's extra month here. Usually you will get one, uh, you'll get three months for free, but with the link in the description, you'll get four months for free. So if you're interested in that, you'll find it in the description down below. And if you're interested in the other options I mentioned today, such as ExpressVPN and Surfshark, you'll find uh, links to special deals and reviews in the description down below. Besides that, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.